Hey everybody, my name is Kala and I am the Shadow Priest in the guild Classic um, for World of Warcraft Classic. This is a guild that uh, Sony Digital and I have created from the ground up and it's getting a lot of exposure and it's really, really exciting. Um, and because of that, I've been getting a lot of people coming over to my Twitch channel asking a whole bunch of questions about priests and shadow priests in general. So I wanted to make this video to go over kind of all of the questions that everyone has been asking me because it's much easier to just put everything in one space instead of just constantly answer people's questions on the Twitch channel. So this video is going to cover um, a number of topics. Uh, I'm going to talk about the 1 to 10 as a priest. I'm going to talk about the uh, wand progression, undead versus troll and dwarf, uh, front loading an MP5. I'm going to talk about spirit in general and um, some mouse over macros that I'm running as well as just convincing people to not be afraid to play shadow despite what they've heard um, and even play shadow if they are a healer while leveling up, leveling up to level 60. So let's get to it. To start out, um, talking about the undead versus troll for horde side and then uh, between night elf and human and dwarf on the alliance side. Honestly, the wonderful thing about Classic is the fact that it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. You should always be playing what you want to play. If you can't handle the animations that Troll have, then don't play a Troll. Despite people saying that, you know, they're best in slot for PvE because of Berserking, it doesn't matter. If you don't like your character, then don't play something that you're not going to like. That is number one. Um, and I feel like not enough people are saying this because... The 0.1% of the times where the racial differences and the tiny little aspects of um, race differences come into effect are so infrequent, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. So I am seriously, I'm so adamant about this. People should not be caring um, about their racials as much as everybody says. However, as a priest, it is a little bit more important than other classes because priests get their own special racial abilities depending on what race they run. So for undead, I get touch of weakness and devouring plague, which for me as a shadow priest main, I cannot play my class without these two abilities. I love them so much. It's not that I can't, it's that I just don't want to. Also, on top of it, the animations for male and female undead are just like, they're among my favorite. They're so cool, and it's so there's so much nostalgia built into this character for me because I played one in original vanilla, and I just, I absolutely love it. You know, they're super edgy, they're, you know, it's like they listen to the same kind of music as me and stuff. It's just really cool. Everything about Undead is all all me. Um, I used to play a troll mage as well, and I got so sick of the animations it wasn't even funny. But that's just myself. Um, troll is very, very powerful for PvE because of Berserking. Having the ability to increase your cast speed like that is... Um, Above all else, very, very strong. So if you are considering going Horde and playing a Priest um, and you are only going to be doing PvE content, I would suggest going Troll, but you can also go Undead and be just as effective. So don't worry about it. Um, troll, obviously they get the Hex of Weakness as well as a Shadow Guard, which is fantastic for proccing, uh, or for proccing uh, Blackout. Um, but the thing is, is people always talk about the racial differences and um, you know being in these situations where you're dueling the best warrior in the world or the best rogue in the world. And it's like, yeah, maybe playing a troll over a undead for a certain matchup in one situation that'll happen one time in the hundred hours, hundred days, 200 days you play classic. Yeah. Maybe having a different race will make you win. But if you are playing for that one situation and sacrificing all of the other time and enjoyment because of it, it is just 100% not worth it. So that's what all I have to say about races uh, for the Horde side. For Alliance side, in my opinion, Dwarf is just above and beyond stronger than, than Human and Night Elf. Um, the ability to have Stone Form, uh, because Priest has very low mobility, so having that to Stone Form out of blinds uh, to stop crippling poisons, all that sort of stuff. Um, even stop uh, undead Priests from hitting you with that Devouring Plague. Of course, you can cure disease as it is, but... Um, just getting out of those situations as a dwarf priest on top of having fear ward i think is monumental um but if i were to play alliance i wouldn't play a dwarf priest because i think dwarfs look ridiculous uh, i would probably play a night elf or maybe a human probably a night elf though um but again it, it's really not the end of the world depending on what you want to run as far as your race combination goes so moving on from races um i want to talk about the uh, one to ten opener for undead because that's what I play. 
a lot of people are asking me uh, how I was able to keep up with like some of the like you know best streamers and best players. I was keeping up with Guzu and Soda Poppin and stuff like that when uh, beta launched with leveling. Even though I messed up my opener quite a bit, it's uh it's really quite simple. Um, the key to being successful as an undead priest um, in the early stages, one to ten or one to twelve before you go to barons, is getting your wand. Your first wand, very very important. So you spend the first six levels in death knell. Um, and then once you get around level six, make sure you're killing basically everything. Uh, that's just kind of like the standard in classic. There's so many leveling guides out there that you can check out. Um, but that's basically the standard. Once you get out of here and you start making your way east to Brill, cause that's what you do, um, right out of the gates. You don't come over here and do anything over here. You go right over to Brill, grab those quests and start doing some of the ones up here. Um, you want to come by this little hut in here and talk to this fine lad Bowen, uh, Briz Boyce and pick up tailoring. So you want to pick that up and um, not spend any linen that you find. That's basically the goal. After this, you want to move east to Brill. And inside the inn, there is a enchanting trainer. And I'll just go right over there and show you. Make sure you're buffing people along the way. It's very important. Nice creature. Look at that. Undead mage leveling up. And he hits me with the buff back. Wholesome as frig. Actually insane. I love the social aspects of this game. So right up here by the priest trainer um, in the top of the Gallows End Tavern in Brill, um, is the journeyman enchanter so pick up enchanting and tailoring and of course make sure you set your hearthstone down here as well and with that you are able to funnel all of your linen into making bolts of linen cloth you want to get to level 30 uh, with this bolt of linen cloth and then go back over here to the trainer and train up um, your white linen robes the white linen robes uh, are uh, like the first green you have access to, basically. Um, I believe you can do it with the brown linen robes as well. Uh, and the white linen robes cost a little bit of bleach, but I don't think the cost really sets you back um, so much. So it doesn't really matter which one you make, but um, I went with white linen robes just because. Um, and you want to make nine of them, disenchant them, and get level 10 on your enchanting. Of course, you need to hopefully find a green at some point um, which shouldn't be too too difficult enchant that and make your rune copper rod but you want to get to level 10 with enchanting and make your first wand after that once you have your first wand everything else becomes so simple when you get level 10 you're going to uh, go into wand specialization as well as spirit tap uh, because those are just so darn important for the early game and that's going to be like your 10 to 20 progression as far as talents are concerned so with that first wand it basically puts you in a position to be able to level to 20 pretty effectively uh, with almost no downtime um, and then there are some quests within the barons area that give you new wands and stuff like that you have chances of finding wands and stuff um, so personally after starting on a completely fresh server like this all i had to do was make the one wand and then i was able to drop the talents or the uh, the professions um and and new ones just came to me like right now i'm running gravestone scepter from uh, black fathom depths um so just after that you can basically just look up um different wands that you can pick up and just go from there so front loading as a priest is pretty much the most important thing in the game um classic world of warcraft has a mechanic built in um called a five second rule so after five seconds your mana starts to regenerate while you're in combat. So front-loading spells allows you to maximize the amount of mana regeneration you have during a fight. Um, I'm not going to really be able to do it on this because they're so low level, but you'll start out with a hard cast spell always, and then at the end of your rotation, you're going to want to put your Shadow Word Pain. So during the first like 10 levels, it was pretty much smite, smite, Shadow Word Pain, uh, and then I would melee um, until I got my wand. Then it would be smite, smite, Shadow Word Pain, and then you only wand. Casting at any point during that um, reduces your efficiency because it puts you in the five second rule. So if you watch, um, I'm casting, and you notice how my mana does not regenerate whatsoever. It just stays at this number. Uh, it's because I'm casting, and I'm not within that five second rule. So it's 11, 11 one, 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 two, nine, five, seven, and it's not going up. But after five seconds of my cast, you'll notice it starts to tick up. 
incrementally and that's what happens when you stay within that rule while while uh, fighting monsters you're actually able to regenerate mana while you're fighting as if you're out of combat um and that's why you don't want to be casting spells at the later portions of a fight so you start with your casts you end with a dot and then you wand and allow your mana to regenerate once you get spirit tap your ma your spirit is doubled um, and your regeneration is just insane. You pretty much don't need water. Um, I obviously have a whole bunch because I've been farming instances because I'm level 30 and I'm just farming gear. But uh, having some water is obviously very important just for you know the situations where sometimes you pull two mobs or your efficiency just isn't there because you're not used to the mechanics. So make sure you always have water regardless, but it's very nice as a priest because you have pretty much no downtime if you're doing it properly. Um, that being said, Having spirit is the most important stat as a priest while leveling. You always want to make sure, obviously my gear right now doesn't have as much spirit as I would normally like just because I'm just trying to gear um, stamina and intellect for uh, duels and world PvP, just trying to get as much health as I possibly can. But spirit is so darn important. Like if I were to start leveling, I would probably switch over to this staff just because having that spirit allows you to have so much regeneration and you basically never need to drink. It's absolutely fantastic. Contrary to popular belief, priests are one of the best leveling classes in the game, in my opinion. It's, they're just, they're so self-sufficient. You can solo pretty much any mob as shadow. Uh, you can even solo elites as shadow. And um, you're just, a, you're an absolute unit of a lad. Uh, I also wanted to talk about uh, shadow priests in general. So I've had a lot of people ask me about leveling as discipline or leveling as holy or a mix of the two. And you guys are crazy. You should absolutely not touch discipline or holy while leveling at any point. Uh, you should only be playing shadow. And the reason why is because if you switch to discipline and you switch to holy, you were so reliant on other players and you do not want to do that in classic. You want to be able to do your own thing um, as far as questing is concerned. Yeah, you can play with another player, but even if you're duo leveling, it's important for you to get... Um, it's very important for you to be shadow. Having that spirit tap, convincing your uh, partner to let you get last hits on on enemies so that you can proc the, the spirit tap is just, it's so powerful. Also, as a shadow priest, you can heal any five man content in the game. Doesn't matter what it is. You can go into an instance as shadow, even at level 60, and you can successfully heal five man groups as a shadow priest. Obviously you're not gonna sit in shadow form and vampiric embrace heal. You're actually going to stay out and play it as a healer properly, but you can do it. In original vanilla, I raided up until Cthune in AQ as a shadow priest. I never specced discipline, I never specced holy, and you know, people might flame me for that, uh, but my guild was fully aware. I was, I didn't have enough gold to switch because I was a PvP -er to switch between Shadow and um, Holy slash Discipline the entire time. Like I, I just straight up didn't have the currency for it. It gets very expensive. Respecking in Classic is insanely pricey. So don't let people convince you that you cannot heal dungeons as a Shadow Priest because you absolutely can. It is very, very easy. Um, yeah, and that's all I wanted to say about Shadow. Please don't be leveling as Discipline and Holy. I beg you to go Shadow. It will be so much better for yourself. So I also wanted to talk about some mouse over macros. Um, in classic beta, obviously, um, you'll notice that raid frames are in the game. Some people might complain about this. Some people might love it. I personally am fine with it. You can have your customization options here. I just had it really small because I was in a raid against the Alliance yesterday. Uh, rest in peace, Asmund. Rest in peace. Stay safe. Um, but yeah, I'll show you some of the macros that I'm running and I can have these linked in the description. They're just simple uh, mouse over macros. So this is the one that I'm using for my shield and it allows me to just hover over somebody in my party and just shield them and not break target. So I can just hover over him, hit four and it'll shield him. Obviously it's not going to do it because he's out of range. But um, yeah, it's pretty simple and that's working for my, my heals. Um, but my dispel is a little bit different. My dispel... Um, won't or will actually use the ability on a harmful target so that I can offensively dispel. So this is the one I'm using for my dispel. And on top of that, I also have a separate macro for self dispel and it's on a separate keybind and I just have that because I'm just so used to it. I suppose I could put a self modifier in the original with shift as a uh, 
yeah, as, as the modifier, but I just prefer it like this for some reason. And that's pretty much what I'm running for macros. Uh, I also have, I guess, Mind Flay, which is just a no channel so that I can spam Mind Flay without it canceling. You'll notice I can just rip the button. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for Shadow Priest. Um, if you guys have any more questions for me, I am streaming basically every single day uh, over at twitch.tv slash Kala. It's just this name here, uh, link in the description as well. And I would really appreciate the support over there. I'm streaming very, very often as I'm saying, and uh, I'm really, really enjoying the classic experience and playing priest. I've got a lot of experience on private servers and um, I played Shadow Priest in original vanilla. So I'm really, really excited to share all the knowledge I have. Uh, about this class with you guys. So thank you very, very much for watching. And if you have any more suggestions, just make sure you let me know. Take care.